for either birthday or Christmas, but a year ago. And he doesn't wear it because it's expensive. <laughs> but he's put it on today. I ration it. Don't ration it because it goes off, doesn't it? Tell him perfume goes off. It Once doesn't heard, go off. It does, sweetie. It doesn't. It goes rancid. Guys, tell him. Does Women it? will know this. Right. Yes. I'm going to do a poll. Perfume goes rancid, <laughs> especially if you keep it in the sun. I'm going to do a poll. Does perfume does go perfume rancid? Does perfume go rancid if left? Is that does a it have a sell-by date? Oh, don't start. No. no. Does it have a no. use-by no. date? Done. You, do, you never do the right question. Because if I sat with you, there'd be 86 different ADHD fidgety questions. I'm going to give you a blast from the past. <sighs> oh, nice. Do it, say it, Mark. Up there for thinking. Down, down there for farting. Up there for thinking. Down there for farting. Up there for thinking. Down there for dancing. Dancing. Yeah, I don't feel you come at things with the same far va voom anymore. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm sniffing your neck. I'm taking this for a blast from the past and it's not enough. No, it's not. You are one of those people that never anything is ever enough. Yes, it is. If you tell me about the toilet roll one more time, I'm going to absolutely leave this well, out. Why don't you just fucking tell me? Well, why don't you not leave all your bras, every single shoe you wear, all on the kitchen table? Yeah, okay, fair enough. Fucking hell. <laughs> Go upstairs and it's basically okay. the DNA of a Touché. woman's underwear. Touche. <laughs> uh, how are we all? <laughs> Julie N. What's up? Julie N's news. Julie N, what's your news? It's fine. Scrolling up, scrolling up, uh, scrolling up. Oh, Julie N. Sorry, yes, of course, you found your lovely oh, son. Oh, I know. God, Brilliant we were news. so happy. Mark and I were talking about that yeah. yesterday. Oh, I hope That's things... such good news, Julie Neary. Yeah, Sorry, I didn't recognise Julie news. N. Such good news. Oh, well done. I'm pleased. Oh, Claire McNabb. Perfume goes if, if oh. it is left in sunlight. It needs, yeah, in sunlight. Yeah, They're all in a drawer. Not, it has. They're in a drawer. I bought it because I love it. It's you in never the darkest room. I've just put the fucking thing on. Yeah, but you never do usually. Every time we go out, I do. You're just so, your brain is so no, uninterested. No, sometimes you swap it for the other your one that I don't like. Your brain is so frantic and busy doing the last minute things you squeeze into every last minute. You don't use your nose. Mark, I use my nose all the you time. Don't I'm use very your nose. good with my nose. Hang on a minute. I'm, no, can I just, I'm just going to say something. Oh God. You need desperately to get your ADHD What is that t-shirt? I don't like it. Oh, for fuck's sake. Listen to me. You're doing it now. I Please get your ADHD diagnosed. It's getting worse. Well, it's you that wants to make a bloody programme out of it. No, it's not. It. It's you that wants to make a bloody programme out of it. I've been diagnosed. Well, I thought it would be really nice to vlog it for the guys. Well, get on with it because I tell you I what. I can't film it, can I? You're the bloody oh, director. Oh, my God. Can you please... Let's have a look at this. Can you please get something sorted? Can you please get something sorted? I like this bit, but I don't like all this bit. Oh, God. It's a bit 80s. Oh, God. Oh, like, oh, Mark, look how similar our tops are. Yeah, I don't like yours. It's Mark, really 80s. Look, you bought me this. I know. It's lovely. It's got holes in the front as well. I know, but I don't get rid of it because it's so nice and I know it's expensive. It's yeah. got so many more holes. <laughs> what do you do when you have an expensive top and a moth eats it? Like oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, no, it's good with the face. It doesn't work as a sitting down top. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Our t-shirts are matching. That's what's so funny. <laughs> it is. Use your nose. Uh, Do perfumes go rancid if left? Yes, seventy-four percent. Thank no, you. 26%. Yes. Are you willing to? Are you willing to to risk it with you when you know how much I paid for that bloody stuff? I just want to sort my. Don't eyebrows. risk it. Just use it. Slap it on every day. What you're saving it for? World War Three's around the corner. Guys, and your perfume. If if, if if we get oh, nuked God. and that perfume hasn't been used, I'll, give you I'll drink it. I'll relapse on it. I'll drink <laughs> it. Um, Emma Lake, welcome to the members area. What are you going to get there? Well, we've been incredibly lax with the members' lives. We do apologise. Nadia's doing one later today. Yeah. Your chance to win a card. So you're going to get a members' live with Nadia. I think she's going to do it. I think we should start to do it on the loo. And then you, the quiz can be how many sounds you can hear. Um, oh, God, this in your coffee, girl. Such a treat. So, a Members Live is happening later. It's a live no-name Sunday show tomorrow. Um, so, that'll be fine. Just, just a bit of What time is there. that? Let's, Let's not sit and do have that great long conversation that bores everyone. I don't really like you today. I don't like you today, oh, actually. Out. God. Yeah. 
Who's going to start? I'm just listening to the joy of that bird. I tell you what I've noticed. Quite a few people are watching the Garden Watch. Well, are they? Our old Garden Watch? Yeah. Well, explain what that is for new people. Why don't you? No, because I just want to check this story I'm talking Garden Watch. Uh, garden Watch was in lockdown. Uh, for people who didn't have a garden, we just plop, plop the camera in the garden and let the birds sing and the trees rustle and the grass Good grow. Good God! Sorry, carry on. I'm very surprised by that stat. I love that photograph. Isn't that the most amazing photograph? Look at that. Oh, wow. I hope it didn't get stepped on straight <coughs> afterwards. So amazing. Um, OK, I'm going to kick off the papers today because this is a little surprise for you, Mark. OK. Late Bloomers is the headline to this. Yeah. A range of vegetable gardening themed condoms have been launched to encourage older Brits to practice safe sex. Vegetable Mark does theme. a gardening programme with his mum on this channel if you want to watch it and it's called Green Fingered Hell. But we should call it Green Fingered Knobs. <laughs> so, so what's the story, guys? So, so the condoms, this, this is in response to the fact that there's a real rise in um, STIs, sexually transmitted um, diseases, um, in the, amongst the over 65s. Listen to this. 52% of over 65s have sex at least once or twice a week. That doesn't surprise me. You're only four years off, babe. It bloody surprises me when I talk to my like friends and they tell me how often they have sex. Well, maybe, that's just, maybe that's just your friends. Are you quite surprised by that? 65, once or twice a week. But Let me do a anyway, poll. do a poll. <laughs> so, um, so what I love about this, so they've got these Durexes, right, come in these seed style packets. Well, and how often available, do they have, hang on, I'm just the in poll. six naughty vegetable themes, including onions, avocados, plums, artichokes, and courgettes and aubergines. So look. Look at that picture. So that, see that? They come in seed packets, but they're Durex. <laughs> Why don't they just make them Durex? So this is Relate. Relate is behind the campaign. And um, yeah, 80% of over 65s have not bought condoms in the past six months. Well, I suppose you wouldn't, would you? But you've got to think of the STIs. Yeah, it's not about pregnancy, it's about... And now, because it's so much easier to date, people that are older and have divorced can have sex. Of course you can. You just have to press a button. All you've got to learn is how to press a button. So Relate are trying to help people break down taboos and get talking. I don't know whether a vegetable condom would get me more talking or less talking. The aspect of it, I think, doesn't work. Is pl plop a load of condoms right next to the seed packets. But why put onions on the front or avocados? Yeah, I mean, like, if I got a condom... <laughs> Randy on buggers says, which... If I got a condom out of... A, right, OK. <clears throat> so you so you and yeah, I have okay. got together. OK, let me walk you into the I... shop. <laughs> so I'm walking into the shop. I'm over 62. No, hang on. We've met on um, Tinder. We've had right. a lovely evening. Yeah. You're, you're in bed. Hang You're in bed. Right, OK. You're lying in bed. It's gone well. And I, and it's, no, we're hot. No, we haven't done it yet. You just I've said got it's the, gone well. No, we've got to get the condoms out. Oh, right, OK, yeah. So it's been going really well. And I reach over to the drawer and you say... What are you reaching for? <laughs> <laughs> and I say, no, I well... Wouldn't, I wouldn't. I say, what's in that drawer? Well, I say, even though my childbearing years are way behind me, I'm still a very cautious woman and... STIs are on the rise. I'm over 65. You know what's going to happen when you turn around to me? I'm out the fucking door. I'm down the garden <laughs> centre buying some bird seed. So look at this. And I get out a vegetable seed packet with a massive great cucumber on it to so get my condom out. How's that going to make you feel? I'll say, is that shallot? <laughs> Jenny Faye says she'd rather have a nice cup of coffee. So would I. But I don't I understand why they put vegetables. So is there a different flavour to each one? I think it would be intimidating to a man if you've got a bloody great cucumber on the front of but the condom. But it would. I think it would it's be. It's like having a big penis on the front of the condom. Why would you do it? Well, I suppose if you go for the onions, it's less intimidating than an aubergine. Yeah, but then you might feel intimidated about your testicles. Ah. Uh, yeah, especially some men, their scrotums just get bigger and bigger. It's a can of worms. It's a can of maggots. Yeah. Um, oh, there you go. Well, it's funny you should pull that story because I think I, I saw that somewhere, but I really like the headline. In Sarah the... Witherington says she hasn't dated in over four years. Not that I haven't tried, <laughs> just too many weirdos. Yeah, I know there's so many weirdos out there. Welcome, Kim Carroll. 
Kim Carroll, welcome as a family guest. Mangle her name. Um, Kim Carroll, Kim Carroll, Kim. Welcome to the family guest. Can I just, can, can, hey, you. <laughs> can I just share with you the headline, the fantastic headlines in the sun for this? They start with rubber plant, as in the seeds. Who says Granny's love life has gone to seed? Oh, that's good. Oh, are we seeing all the seed packets yeah, there? So what have we got? Courgette. Onion. Oh, I see oh my the, God, it's called oh, the they... Horny Cultural Society. <laughs> But look what they've done with the avocado. They've split it in half, so it looks like two ovaries. Oh, but uh, their ovaries are all short. Aubergine. Oh, look, the artichoke looks like <coughs> a moon on in them. Oh, plums are bums. You can grope me cantaloupes, but you mustn't touch me plums. You can stroke me artichokes, but you mustn't touch me plums. <laughs> are you feeling wholly cultural? Oh, yes. <laughs> Feeling very horticultural, darling. Oh, I'm God. going to go and use my trowel. Mark, no, that was too loud. Now you're showing off. I'm trying to hit the back of the theatre, babe. Um, OK, well, in all the papers today, there's the story of will they, won't they, are they, aren't they, are they part of the premiership, and will they be on the balcony? Um, apparently, being on the balcony is only reserved for those who actually do things for the royal family. So Prince Harry and Meghan are excited and on. It's funny how this story broke yesterday on my phone. All the alerts coming in were Meghan, Harry and Andrew excluded from balcony. But now it's become an inclusive story where actually it's amazing that they've been invited to celebrate the Platinum Jubilee at all. Um, so yeah, there you go. I think it's only working royals, isn't it? Working <laughs> royals. Look, there they all are. Except there's one in the middle there that shouldn't be there. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of the papers are sort of just sort of saying this. They'll not be seen on the Buckingham Palace balcony at the opening of the Jubilee, but they will be coming and bringing their children to. Could this be the beginning of a cessation of hostilities? Oh, that would be nice. I think it would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, I was lucky enough a few years ago to fly out to L.A. for 24 hours with Stacey Solomon. Oh, my God. Can you believe going to L.A. for just 24 hours to interview Jane Fonda and four other greats? Uh, for a movie they'd done. Unfortunately, the movie wasn't very good. But but she was she was incredible. She really, really was. She's so smart, so friendly, so warm. This is her, her on the front cover of... Is it Vogue? No, Glamour. 80... At 85 years old. Look at that. Go a bit further. 63 that. years after the first time she did the cover. Isn't that incredible? And, and what I like... 84, actually. And... Um, what I like about what she says, she said she never in a million years could have imagined that she would have felt and looked as good as she does at 84 years old. She is so full of energy and and it was just, we were talking about... Yes, yeah, she is. I honestly have met her. She's, no, no, she no, walks no, no, into a no, no. room and you're like, wow. But I sometimes wonder about these celebrities because it's a big thing, isn't it? That you get over a certain age. Americans especially so have such va va voom in their later years. They, I mean, look at her. Her face has been sandblasted, hasn't it? Yeah. And she, I mean, she looks remarkable, but she doesn't look like Jane Fonda. I mean, it's not I'm Jane not Fonda really anymore. talking about, actually, I'm not that bothered about the detail of her face, which, of course, we know she would have had help with and all of that. You, were, you saw her. I've seen her breasts. Quite... Uh, yeah. And what, what was she then, about 75? 75, and, and it was the most curious image. I mean, I just couldn't kind of marry the fate. Explain why you saw well, she, well, I didn't want to go into too much detail. Well, it seemed a bit inappropriate. Yeah, well, yeah, I wasn't in a private well, clinch with think. her. <laughs> it's irrelevant. She was on stage and she, she, uh, part, her part required her to show her chest. And she was very proud of them and they looked astonishing. And But they looked like the, the, it looked like the body of a much younger woman. Let's you just said way. you felt really uncomfortable that they weren't the breasts of an 84-year-old woman. Well, no, I, my, my first thing about any sort of plastic surgery is not... I don't mean in a patronising way. I just sort of think, oh, what a shame that she feels she has to do that. Oh, I can't wait for my face. I know, no, but I mean, I thought, well, what a shame. Because also, what a shame that she feels she has to show them. Like that. Well, know. anyway, but anyway, I was talking more about about the energy yeah. and just the stance and everything. We were talking about this on Loose Women yesterday. It didn't make it to the show. We were just talking in the meeting. And I was saying, I've really made this decision of the kind of old I want to be. And and that's that's why I've changed so much with what I'm eating, the amount I'm exercising, I'm upping that gradually, <laughs> gradually. Because I've decided I want to be that old person that, 
sits up and, and still like has a presence and walks in with energy and, and all that sort of stuff. And talks with a good strong voice. And if you think about it, she, right, way back in the 80s, we were all doing Jane Fonda videos, she has consistently exercised, looked after herself, stayed engaged with all kinds of people, young people, every kind of person. I mean, a while back we were watching the Dolly Parton documentary and you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that Jane Fonda and Dolly Parton would be these incredibly close friends, but I just think she's so interested mm. in people. That's mm. what you get when you meet her. Mm. And I think that's so much of what makes keeps you young. Forget about wrinkles and all of that. I think it's... Well, it I can comes think of, from inside. I can I think, think of a very good does. friend of ours who, who, who is like yes. that. You know, she, she's so Absolutely. much younger than her years. She's live wise. But Reese, you kind of hit the nail on the head. The thing about Jane Fonda is she's lived a life of totality from political activism to a range of dynamic roles, which yes. also still being active in working and protesting causes. Being plugged in and being, so and being sort people. of, you know, energised yeah. by being part of the world is, is a huge aspect of it. But the thing I wanted to say is I do sometimes wonder sometimes that, yes, you get these incredibly... American often energized older women, but I do wonder whether sometimes that's the PR image, and then as soon as you kind of roll the all the press away, the door shuts out like that. <laughs> you know, I mean, because you can, there's got to be a point at which the body and the brain just shuts off and shuts down. But she is, you're right. I, she is an I astonishing. Do think woman. We, Mark and I have old people alert when there's certain things that we say and we go, "That's an old people." Oh, look at the state of look at the state of that car, or oh my god, you know, look at them. Crossing the road Listen that to that music. Those really old, and we pull each other up at all time because I think you can just start to close off more and more and more. Your world becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. I become want less, that toast. less and less engaged, mm. and I think that can make us old before our time. I entirely agree, Miss Sawala. Um, I, look, we've talked so much about um, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp this week, but I just wanted to say, I haven't really sat down with Nads on camera and talked about it at all. I just wanted to show you the series of images that uh, the Times are running with. Uh, quite a remarkable series of expressions there. I mean, um, oh, the girls lots were of people talking something about on... overperformance and uh, another piece, sorry, I'll finish and then I'll ask yes, you to finish. Uh, and then there's a piece in the uh, Daily Star saying that Johnny Depp are angry at Amber's acting. And we know that this splits people down the middle, but I did kind of want to know what your opinion on it, Nads, is, given the sensitivity of domestic abuse. Because I'm trying to tiptoe around my sense of things between them without wishing to diminish the experience of a domestic violence victim. It's quite a tricky... It's, it's very a very tricky, tricky one to do. Because I always believe when people say, and, I, and you know me well enough here, guys, I'm very much... In fact, I get attacked for that quite a lot, that I'm always on the woman's side except something doesn't sit right with me on this because if you have been a superstar for decades, right, and somebody comes forward and says something like this and there's not a single other person, think of the access that he's had to women through his life. We know what it's like. We know what movie stars, soap stars... Hundreds of women, if they want, thousands of women over that time. And this is why I'm a great believer in people speaking up. I know people say, oh, well, people speak up and then all these other people come out of the woodwork. It's not quite as simple as that because police do, you know, interview each person individually, really, before it's made public, don't mm. they? And then it's whether stories corroborate, can't say that. And then, and then actually police do often use it as a fishing net to bring other people mm. that might have been too afraid or too... Mm. And so I, though I know that has its real downfalls, that, that, that way of um, investigating, I also think it has revealed to us some, many times some really rotten to the core people. And what seems odd to me, I'm not saying I don't believe her, but what gets my nose tickling about this is there's not a single other woman that has come forward and said that he's ever been abusive to her. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that if, you know, if she there was... She might not have triggered him. <clears throat> I, I, don't, I don't know, but this is what makes me uncomfortable. Also what makes me uncomfortable is just in my soul, when I see her talking, it doesn't feel right. And again, I could be wrong about that, you know, and we, we uh, that's why I'm not standing in judgment. I'm just saying where I, what I feel about it. I'm trying to there put was... myself all the way through my lives in the position of the juror. Jur I mean, what happens is that if, if you caught for a minute that you... Uh, all I've noticed, I sense sometimes, is there's, there's huge Deppian loyalty. 
there's microscopic Amber Heardian loyalty. And I always just feel uncomfortable about the prospect of that being divided along any kind of misogynistic yeah. lines. But the jury, which is mainly consists of men, interestingly, are having to make their own judgment based on what they're presented with. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to forget almost the context, the broader context of it, other than what you're hearing and what you're seeing. I have the same I have the same issue with that. I think it's I've, I've heard another body language expert talking about how strange it is that she's looking individually into the eyes of each juror. We can't see the eye line from our angles, but apparently she is and that that in itself is not uh, exactly in keeping with someone who's gone through some of the things that she's talking about. But also you always have to leave your mind open to that you know think of other times when people have been judged for the way they behave in court and then mm. it's become true. So I don't know. Mm. I don't think we'll ever know the truth about this, how will we ever? But just me, I just, it just didn't sit right. The girls were showing me a, something, a clip of a film of her the other day and she was she was crying and blowing her nose and the cameras went and she paused and that's posed a, for the camera. Yeah, that is a meme that's been on Twitter. I is mean. that is that real? Could that have been mucked about? I mean, so many mean? people are saying it could be coincidental. I mean, yeah, the problem is be. you don't know how many of these clips are. But I suppose I'm talking about the overall thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, Johnny Depp is getting pulverised anyway. You know, I, I like Johnny Depp. We know people that know Johnny Depp, that work with Johnny Depp. We know people that have worked with Amber. We know what we've heard about, about both of them behind the scenes. So that will be influencing us a bit as well, I suppose. But... Yeah. Just a quick note, Melanie Williams, it's interesting you mention that. It's mutual abuse, you know, mutuality. I mean, I've talked a lot in the lives about how I feel there's a lot of truth in the description of addiction and living with addiction and chaotic behaviour and all that kind of stuff. This line, though, I mean, Johnny Depp is best friends with a serial rapist and torturer of women, Marilyn Manson. This has been, they keep dropping the Marilyn Manson name in there. You could, by the same <coughs> extension, argue that J um, James Franco, who was a serial groomer of women in his acting school that Johnny Depp had no time for whatsoever. By the flip side, you could argue that maybe he was on, on, on the money when he came, it came to him not trusting and not liking James Franco. I think this damned by association is really tricky. And really do we tricky. know, as MeTube says, that he is best friends? Friends. Precisely. I mean, I mean he's, these he's the, friends with all these musicians. These are, these are the words that get slipped in that can make mm. a real difference to the way. So I think we have to be really careful. Do we actually know that they're best friends? Mm. I mean, we've probably moved through our career and been friends with all sorts of people that we didn't really know what their thing was. So... Um, it's not always by association, mm. I don't think. But anyway, we're certainly... One thing's for sure, we're never going to know the truth. Not for sure. But anyway, obviously, we'll be back with the lives on that <coughs> on uh, May 16th, I think. Um, so, look, look oh, at I this. Oh, I saw that. Isn't this just so beautiful? It's exquisite. Look at this garden. Isn't that stunning that this couple have been tending to? And I thought you'd love it, Mark, because do I spy a whole load, load of beautiful aces in there? You do, darling. Do you like, do you actually like that garden? Uh, I do. It's perhaps a little too linear, the lawn and all that kind of stuff. I'm not... So yeah, this but, couple... But I do like it. It's beautiful. So this couple, they're 72 and 74, Tony and Marie, they've worked on this garden for 40 years together. 3,000 plants, including az azaleas, Japanese maples and junipers. Um, oh, you can go and we'll see it. They've got 17 million online fans. Oh, wow. We should go and see it. We should go and visit it, it for Greenfield Health. And, and which help them raise £52,000 for charity. It's a labour of love. And it's so... It's, look how happy they look, Mark. Just sat with their cup of tea in the garden. Aww. It's like that. I see that with you and your mum when you're both out in the garden. You both look so happy with each other. You're chatting and laughing. We can't stand each other. <laughs> We're constantly arguing. Um... You were going to talk about um, Dave Myers. Were no, you? no? Oh, oh, so tra tragic oh, news about you. Harry Biker. Yeah. Uh, Dave Myers has revealed that he has cancer and is undergoing chemotherapy. Yeah, um, he's such a nice man. He he. When he was a makeup artist, mm. he made my dad up a couple of times for films. Yeah, you said. He's yeah. such a nice man. Um, he says I've had to speak up about the diagnosis because I don't want to hide under a rock. But I would love it if people respected my privacy and just let me get on with it. You see, in another interview, he said something along the lines of, I'm now going to be one of the baldy bikers. So, well, yeah, cancers, cancers, I've been talking a lot about cancer this week. On, on Wednesday, when I, I think a lot of you might have seen on Instagram, I did vlog it. I had a most lovely 24 hours with um, four of my friends, all of whom have had breast cancer and one who is um, battling away with secondary breast cancer. 
<clears throat> and so much, and also another very good friend of mine has just been diagnosed with breast cancer. So mm. it's, sorry. <laughs> I mean, and what I've learned about breast cancer over the last few years, well, I suppose many cancers, but much more, I've learned a lot more about breast cancer is just how fucking tough the treatment can be and how that got, and, and the difficulty if you have estrogen receptive breast cancer, of course, there's so many different kinds of cancer, of breast cancer. I didn't know that. I only thought there was breast cancer. Mm. I didn't know there was multiple different kinds. And estrogen receptive cancer means that immediately a woman is diagnosed, she's given drugs to completely suppress every drop of estrogen, plunged into a surgical menopause, which is unbelievably difficult, and no HRT. So actually, I put this on our WhatsApp group, our Cancer Girls WhatsApp group, uh, this morning, and they were all quite excited about it. Now, I'm not a doctor. I am not a doctor. This oh, is just an I thought, article. I thought you were. I'm not giving any medical advice. This is just an article in the Daily Mail today, and um, it's from medical oncologist Dr. Avron Blooming, who has spent four years as senior investigator at the National Cancer Institute, has extensively reviewed all medical evidence on the subject of HRT and breast cancer. And um, he's, he basically said, um, out of the dozens of uh, studies, only one has found an increased risk of breast cancer returning in women taking HRT, he explained. So he's questioning that study. On the basis of one study, millions of women around the world are being denied HRT following a diagnosis of breast cancer. I'm not recommending that every woman should take HRT, but the decision should be individualised. Um, and actually, I was talking to my friends the other day because, of course, they all desperately want oestrogen. They've got aching bones and because of being plunged into a, a menopause, you know, dry vagina, all this other stuff that comes with that. And um, we were saying, how come women are never offered breast cancer and never offered testosterone? Mm. Because that really helps mental clarity, tiredness, sex drive which, of course, is depleted without any testosterone. And we were like, because that's got nothing to do with the breast cancer, has it, has it? And we were like, imagine if this is a new scandal yeah. that women just weren't offered testosterone. Mm. So I'm really excited about this, that they're going to be thinking in a different way, that they're saying um, that, um, that, you know, that, that people's cases should be individualised. So... Maybe if you're somebody that has had breast cancer and been denied HRT, look into it further because it might have just been a blanket no when actually it might mm. have been okay for you. So mm. that is like potentially some good news. Anne Collard, I've been living with primary breast cancer for nearly 20 years, diagnosed at 32, and secondary stage four for over 14 years. Been on wow. constant chemo now since 2014. Good wow. God. You Trojan warrior. You've had secondary for 14 years. Mm. Mm. Good grief. Good grief. I wonder if do you do you follow my friend Lizzie underscore England on Instagram? She's got she's the one that I was talking about that has secondary. She has three children, um, the youngest one being two. Maybe you could follow her and share that. That would be so hopeful for her that you've lived with that for 14 years, though I know that will have been incredibly hard for all the drugs and everything you have to take. Mm. Wow, God. Um, I just wanted to share this story because I heard this story and it was the kind of thing that I think would make a fascinating film. Um, no more dominoes. Dismay over noise ban in City Square. This is a very sweet story. Yeah, sorry. Thursday afternoon at Maida Hill, Ma Maida Hill Market Square is filled with West Indian pensioners happily playing dominoes. Now, if anyone knows real proper domino playing, it is a, it's, it's a, an, an, an endemic part of West Indian culture. I remember as a child, I used to often hang out in a West Indian uh, barbers and we and we'd go to, um, what was it called, a uh, youth, youth club. It had a certain name, it was like associated with the church. And all the old guys would be in there and they'd be playing dominoes in this hall. And the sound of the dominoes, the sound of the dominoes, to this minute I can remember the crack, 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 crack. But anyway, the, in, this, in this square in London, um, it's a huge gathering place for very lonely, as this chap who's a mm. representative, Ernest Theophile says, uh, the, the Domino Square has solved loneliness and COVID and culturally oh. and everything. But the local council has put a ban, has put an injunction no. on them playing due to the noise. Oh, my God. Yeah. You're yeah. joking. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
Um, and so, and I heard about this on the radio yesterday. And I just want to again take take umbrage with oh, with uh, Nick Ferrari because a young oh, West Indian God. woman rang in yesterday and took took him to task, rightly so, for him describing the way in which this community aggressively and violently played dominoes. And like she said, she said, why do we always have to use words of such a pejorative nature when it comes to ethnic minorities? And I just thought, and there he is, look, this is this guy urging everyone oh, to have tolerance God, and understand. Don't. Yeah, yeah, so no. Oh, God, he's yeah, so cute with his waistcoat. <laughs> exactly. I can't bear it. And it's a massive part, it's a massive pull together for, for, for older, older men in the West Indian community. Um, and I've got a few other, I just wanted to show you two, uh, two picture stories. One, this dog, Maddie will love this when she I sees like it. it. This dog fish. swallowed 16 golf balls. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face. Look at his, his face. face. Oh my God. And then this image is quite phenomenal. Before you say anything, this is, take, this is a photograph taken with safe dog dyes, as in D-Y-E's uh, colour. Look at this photograph. Oh my God. Of this dog. What, what is it? What they've, is the they've put, they, they've put a dye on it and it's jumping through the air and that's the dye bouncing off the, the fur as it, oh, as it leaps God, through the air. that's a stunning photo. I'm going to show that to Kiki. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, pop that to the side. Um, and, and one other thing, I just wanted, can I just please finish on a Jeremy Clarkson note? I pulled this story because I thought this would be interesting actually, maybe for a How to Stay Married bloke core, how men of my age have a, the, the style, of, style choices on offer essentially say that you don't have to make any effort. It's make no effort style. But I just wanted to read, Jer Jeremy Clarkson does make me laugh. He's describing his attitude to denim. I know this will make Maddie laugh as well. It's not that I love